Hey everyone, Cleo here and welcome to my channel and today I will be reacting to the shortlist announcements for the Man Booker Prize 2019. Now I'm going to keep it relatively brief. It's just going to be like a short overview of the books that were nominated and maybe some objections I have to seeing them on the list, uh, but they are really purely practical objections because I have not read any of the books on long list or shortlist. So this is basically practicality speaking about me being able to finish the shortlist in time for the announcement of the winner, which is totally up to uh, my fault, I will also say. Um, but so the shortlist for the book prize was announced today and out of the 12 books on the long list, six made it onto the shortlist, which was basically what I was assuming was going to happen. Uh, I don't think there's a fixed amount that they need to uh, put on the shortlist, but it's usually about six books. Now, of the 12 books, I owned exactly one book, The Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli. Also haven't read it yet, but it'll have to wait now because it didn't get nominated for the shortlist. Um, so, apart from this one book that I owned, I also have three books that are on my TBR for September, which are on my audiobook, uh, which are on my script subscription, so um, yes. None of those made it onto the shortlist. So I think I'll still continue keeping these on my September um, TBR just because it's evident to me that I won't be able to finish the shortlist in time for the announcement of the winner. And like in all, in its, in its totality, listening to these three audiobooks will take me uh, 16 hours, I think. I think it's better to just do those three. I'm also really getting excited about those three, so I'll just continue like that. But so in any case, so four out of the 12 books that I actually had available to me to read have not made it onto the shortlist. So um, yeah, problem number one. Problem number two is that there are some books on that shortlist that require me, or that I feel require me to read other books or that are just extremely long. So the first book on the shortlist for uh, the Booker Prize 2019 is already the biggest practical problem, I guess, and that is The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I have read this book twice already in my life, and one of them was relatively recent. Uh, I read it before the uh, TV series came out, so I guess like two to three years ago. But I do feel like before going into the Testaments, I want to reread The Handmaid's Tale again. Now, this isn't necessarily a huge setback. It is 324 pages, so it doesn't, it's not going to take me weeks to finish this. But I also have a super ambitious September TBR, and I'm not necessarily wanting to uh, bump any of those books off of the list. So I think I'm just going to... Um, embrace the fact that I won't be able to finish the shortlist before the announcement of the winner and just read the shortlist after the winner has been announced. But so the Testaments by uh, Margaret Edwards is a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. The Handmaid's Tale, in case you don't know, there's a TV series about it as well, in case you were interested. It is a dystopian story in which we are kind of in a future society in which females are being used sort of just as um, yeah, they're just being harvested in a way for their fertility, so women are being uh, used just in order to be able to reproduce and to have other kids. So you will have these powerful guys who have um, a handmaiden that is assigned to their uh, household and then the... Uh, well, you can sort of guess it, the birds and the bees go to work in order to create babies because babies are a big deal in the society, it's no longer that easy to produce babies at that time. Uh, of course, this raises a lot of problems and a lot of concerns about uh, human rights and the way these women are being treated, the way their identity is being stolen. So I was definitely already very interested to read the Testaments. I just was hoping not to uh, have it on the shortlist in order to kind of give me more time to get into it. But as I said, I've since I've now come to terms with the fact that I won't be able to uh, finish in time for the announcement of the winner on the 14th of October. 
Second book on the list uh, that is causing a problem with being able to reach, uh, reach that deadline of the 14th of October is um, Duck's Newbury Report by Lucy Elman. Duck's Newbury Report uh, is not a book for which I would have to read another book or anything like that. It is just a very long book. It is, I think, a 1,000 page book or even more. Uh, in, and it's supposedly, well, as far as I've heard from other people who've read it, it's written in a stream of consciousness style. I'm scared to death of stream of consciousness. I've tried to get into Ulysses at some point, couldn't even finish three pages, I think. Uh, I'm still hopeful that I might uh, like uh, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, which is also stream of consciousness. But like most of my encounters with stream of consciousness, have not gone down well. So I'm hoping that this is a is is a change. Of course, it's also set in our modern day, which hopefully will mean that I'll actually like it. I've heard nothing but positive reviews. I've heard a lot of people saying that they absolutely that they absolutely wanted it on the shortlist. So that makes me definitely hopeful. However, uh, there is no way in which I'm going to be able to read a 1,000 page uh, stream of consciousness book plus five other books, uh, including then even some other more, uh, in time for the 14th of October. So this has also made me consider that perhaps I might already decide at this point that I'm not going to be able to make it. Um, Duck's Newbie Report, as far as I've been made aware, it is, uh, so it's a stream of consciousness style, but it is basically a housewife sharing all of her thoughts about her day-to-day uh, -day life. Um, this does not sound interesting, but apparently all of the people who are raving about it says that it is actually very interesting, that it is very, uh, it's filled with humor, with sadness, with laughter, uh, with good times, bad times, and that they absolutely enjoyed it and they absolutely thought that it was wonderful, though they of course agree that there are parts which are less interesting, which are more or less boring, which I think is probably also the idea behind stream of consciousness, because you're just showing it as it is, and so yeah, you're not having wonderful, ingenious, brilliant thoughts all the time. Third book on the list, third problem for me on the list is uh, Quixote by Salman Rushdie, which is obviously based on this novel in two parts, Don Quixote de la Mancha by Miguel Cervantes. Don Quixote de la Mancha has been on my to read, um, my ideal to read list for ages, but I have it in Spanish because I know Spanish, but that would mean I have to read, I want to read it in Spanish, and I feel like I should be reading it before I read Salma Rushdie's Quixote, but the Spanish edition is 1,500 pages. Uh, kill me now. So I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with that. Because even if I give myself time until the end of the year, I don't know whether I'll, I don't know the, whether I like Don Quixote de la Mancha, whether it'll be easy for me to read that thing in a, in one go or not. So um, I'm still debating on reading Don Quixote first or uh, just going into Quixote and then maybe giving myself time in 2020 to read Don Quixote de la Mancha. But so. That's all I know. I don't know anything about the premise of uh, Quixote. I'm assuming it's going to allude to Don Quixote and that it might also be about how literature is driving its main character crazy or about this sort of comical um, relationship between Don Quixote de la Mancha and Sancho Panzas. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what it's going to be, but I'm very excited to get into Salman Rushdie because I've been saying forever that I want to read it in Rushdie, so now uh, I'm kind of being not force, of course, this is for pleasure, but I'm kind of being steered into his reading. Finally, I'm given an extra reason to give a prior to prioritize getting into his work. Next up, we end the list of problems that I'm having in order to reach the deadline, and we get to the three remaining books on the shortlist. First one of which I can actually tell you nothing about because I sadly don't know anything about it, and that is an orchestra of my orchestra. Oh, an Orchestra of Minorities by Chigozi Obiami, I think is the name. 
no, Chigozi Obioma, sorry. Uh, I don't know too much about this book. Uh, I had kind of written it off because most of the people who are like discussing the Booker Prize and who have actually experience with this, unlike what I'm doing here, um, kind of had written it off. They, it didn't seem to be anybody's expectation for reaching the shortlist, so I also kind of assumed it wasn't going to make it, so I didn't look too much into it, and so I'll be very happy to find out what it is actually about. I'm expecting something to do with minorities, probably, and maybe also some allusions to music, but the title sometimes is way more deep than what I'm making out of it. Uh, next up on the list is a book that I'm excited to be getting to, because uh, I've heard nothing but good praise for it, and it's also about womanhood, and that's an, uh, something that definitely interests me and this is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine, um, sorry, last name, by Bernardine Evaristo. Now, um, I think, if I remember correctly, it is a collection of like short stories or disparate stories about girls, women, about um, girls and about womanhood in all shapes and sizes, about like the different roles females can take on. Um, but so far, as far as I'm aware, these are all disparate stories, but they somehow also are interrelated, which intrigues me very much. And then the final book on the shortlist is 10 minutes and 38, se 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by, by Elif Shafak. Um, basically what I've uh, intoned from uh, reviews that I've heard, it's that the 10 minutes 38 seconds refers to the time that um, your brain is still conscious or alive or whatever you want to refer to it as after you die. So it takes a while for the brain uh, to die out, for the brain to become non-active and that would be those 10 minutes and 38 seconds and so what we are doing is following somebody in those 10 minutes 38 seconds after they've uh, been killed. So that sounds very intriguing. I don't know uh, too much about the circumstances. I think she's stabbed, uh, stabbed and left in a dumpster but I could be mistaken about that. Um, but it sounds very intriguing and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into this. So this is a short list. Now um, what I did last year and I'm going to be doing it again this year is I ordered my books for the short list on uh, Book People which is uh, the Book People which is a UK uh, bookstore uh, but they also have a web store and every year they uh, sell the shortlist of the Booker Prize in like one package all hardback editions. So this year it also has an exclusive hardback edition of that 1000 page book by uh, Lucy Ellman. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be doing that because it's a great value for what you're getting. Uh, but it is actually an interesting problem then because they can only sell that bundle when the Testaments by Margaret Atwood becomes available. So I have pre-ordered it, but it did already state that um, it was not available, you know, you could order it, but it said like we are waiting for availability. So I assume that that indeed means that they are going to be, have to wait until the publication of the Testaments by uh, Margaret Atwood in order to actually be able to ship the full package. But so yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just a short, I hope short, <laughs> overview of the books nominated and um, the reasons why I will have to be postponing my reading for it. I mean, uh, I don't mind reading after the winner has been announced. I hope maybe next year I can do it otherwise, but honestly I prefer not to buy the full long list just because I know that there will be books in there that aren't really my thing. So I'd prefer to wait for the shortlist and get those books and then I'll still uh, sell the, some of them afterwards if they weren't really my thing, but it will just be less of them. And uh, I don't have too much availability of these books here because uh, yeah, I'm not living in a, in a country where English is the mother tongue, so in the library they won't have any of these books available before. And um, on audiobook as I said for this year for example there were only three out of 12 books available on audiobooks so uh, probably i'll have to resign myself to this being the situation every single year but um i definitely want to see if year by year maybe uh things will change but in any case uh i did it like this last year and i did, definitely didn't take anything away from the reading experience to be like, yeah, but Milkman is the winner, so why read all of the others? So um, I'm very happy that I actually read the entire shortlist after reading Milkman, because Milkman turned out to be one of the books on the shortlist last year that 
was like less ple le least pleasing to me. I mean, out of the six books on the shortlist last year, it was one of the two books that I enjoyed less, the least. I mean, there's one book I enjoyed even less than Milkman, but there are definitely like there were two books on there that I thought were amazing that didn't weren't the winners, and then there were two books that I found okay. So I'm definitely. Uh, planning on still reading the shortlist even if I have to wait until, uh, even if I can only start or if the winner is announced while I'm still working on it. So um, please let me know down below what your uh, plan is for the Booker Prize uh, shortlist reading this year. Are you participating? Will you also be reading the shortlist? Uh, if so, which books have really caught your attention? Which ones are the ones that you want to prioritize? Which are the ones that you want to prioritize? Um, are there any that you think that I should prioritize out of this list? Uh, if so, uh, let, definitely let me know, it would be very interesting. Will you be rereading uh, The Handmaid's Tale or be trying to tackle Don Quixote uh, in order to kind of deepen your uh, experience with these books on the shortlist? Uh, or do you think I'm crazy for even considering? Definitely let me know down below and then I'll see you guys soon, hopefully with a Booker Prize update at some point. Bye!